Hello and welcome to the next episode of Python for Chemical Engineering Calculations. In this video I will continue talking about loops and give you a few more examples a little bit more advanced than in the previous video. Let me start from introducing the same list I introduced before, the list of the first few elements of the periodic table. But along with this list I'll introduce another one, a list of masses and what I'd like to do I actually would like to print not just the elements and not just the masses but I want to print the following information about the elements I have I want to print its number in the periodic table the name of the element and the atomic mass and in order to do that I'm gonna use loops and I'm going to use the same for loop I used before however I'll show you a few practical tricks right now so first of all if we already have a list we can get the length of this list and use it when coding our loop so n will be the length of elements well you should be careful that your masses has the same length as elements i'm not going to add an if else statement but you can in order to check it i'll go straight to the for loop and i do for and i can call it i in range of n so in the range of these element numbers right i want to print this data so let me create for each of the strings here let me create these data so first let me call it element data and it should start from my i from my number but i want it to be a string so i need to do str of i converting it to string then i add a space after it and then i add the elements name so and i can do elements i and elements, as you can see, there are strings, so I don't need to convert this to string. I'm just adding another space here and continuing on the next line using this symbol here, I'm adding the masses. And the masses are integers, so I need to convert them to string again. So str of masses of i. So this el data this string should contain all the information i need about every element and i will repeat this in the loop as long as i have this list of elements and after that i want to print it let me make sure i have the correct indentation so i do print el data let me try running it and well i'm getting where i want it all right it's the number of elements, the name of the element, and the mass. The only problem is that in Python, everything is numbered from zero, not from one. So in order to fix that, I can change here to i plus one and rerun my script. And then, well, hydrogen will have its, well, legitimate number of one and not zero. Okay, I want to show you a couple more examples of loops. Let me, while well, I can comment out this code, actually I won't need it, so I don't need to comment this out, I can simply delete it. Let's say we want to calculate a sum of certain consecutive numbers, right? Sum of integer numbers from one to whatever, to whatever number we want, right? So let's write a loop to do that. That's a very typical example. Okay, so I'll introduce a variable sum equals to zero. Then I introduce my for loop for i in range, and then I need my n, whatever it is, right? Let's say n equals 20, not forget colon at the end. Here I do sum plus equal i, and I do print sum. Let's see if it works. Well, yes, it does. It did 
print me the sum of these numbers. Well, obviously not till 20, but till 19, because range ends at the value n minus 1, but it does what it was supposed to do. Now I want to modify this loop. Let's say I want to print the sum of numbers as long as the sum does not exceed a certain value. And let me introduce another variable, let's say 100. So in order to do that, I can add the following instruction. After I calculate my sum, I can check if sum, or even before I calculate my sum, right? I can check if the sum is less than 100, this number n. So I'm adding if m less, well, or better to say, if, if it's less, then I will be printing but if it's greater than 100, then I won't. And what I can do with my loop, I can break my loop. I can do break. So, and if this condition is satisfied, then the loop will stop here and won't get go to n equals 20. It won't go to the last element of this loop. Let me try running it. Well, clearly it did not work because, oh, because instead of checking the condition for the sum, I checked the condition for m, which is not true. So what I was supposed to have instead, I was supposed to have sum greater than 100. Okay, let me run this. And indeed, it printed the sum of numbers while well, till it get to this number 91. Presumably, the next case would have been greater than 100. And the last example which I want to show, which would solve the same problem but differently, is an example of a different loop. Along with the for loop, Python has a while loop. And while loop is executed till a certain condition is true. So if we want to calculate the same, to solve the same example, to calculate the sum of numbers till the sum is, does not exceed 100, we can do the following. So let me comment this out. I don't want to erase it and do while sum less than 100. What I need to introduce here, I would need to introduce i for each term in my sum. So I, I would need i equals zero here. Uh, oh, instead of 100, I have the variable m, right? Sum less than m. First, I do i plus equal one, then I do sum plus equals i, and then I do print sum. Let me try running it. In the case of a for loop, we broke the loop as soon as the sum exceeded 100. Here, in the case of this while loop, we check the condition, this condition, before calculating the sum and before printing the sum. So then, at the last step, the sum exceeded 100, but we still printed it. In the next step, however, this condition will be violated and the while loop will not proceed further.